first story. Entitled alcoholic mom, thought she could live in OP's house rent-free, and also sue her, claiming it's her house. Well, now she is divorced and homeless. I bought a small, starter home during the housing market crash completely by myself. I lived there for the better part of a decade before buying a larger home with my now husband. My parents really wanted to live there because it was small and easy to maintain. They have foreclosed in the past, so no way would they be capable of someone giving them a mortgage. Also, my dad is retired, and my mom doesn't work. They wanted to rent from me. For a discounted rent, they paid off the mortgage, let's say $50,000, with an over six-figure inheritance my parents got. A lease was written explaining that it was a prepayment of rent, and their rent would be only the taxes and insurance, and they would pay $350 per month. Basically only going up when taxes insurance go up. We signed the lease with all the other typical stuff in it, and had it notarized. And that's how it's been for a while now. So to be clear, I'm not making a effing dime on this house. I recently told them the rent would go up by $3, yes, 3 effing dollars because of a slight increase in the insurance. My mother lost. Her. SHT. Claiming I'm a money-hungry bee. She was going to rip out everything she did garden and other cosmetic changes that I owe her, and I can't evict her because it's her house. She's not responsible for the insurance lease says otherwise. Insurance hasn't been raised in a decade look at effing lumber prices. I'm trying to make her pay my personal homeowner's insurance. A court will show me that and give her my house. We have a notarized lease. They are listed as tenants. I am the only one on the deed. My father demanded the bills zero balls this man has to see if I'm ripping them off. P.S. This house is a commutable distance from effing Manhattan, so a studio apartment around here is like $1,500. This is a house with a large yard for their dog. I can easily get $2,000 for this house, even before they moved in. I sent them copies of the taxes and insurance, showing only their address. P.S. I'm charging them discounted taxes, you get a discount for paying in full 90 days early. I told them to add and divide by 12, and told my mother to talk to a lawyer, so they could slap them straight. I guess my father agreed with me because now she's divorcing my father. Update. First, I want to thank everyone. I was mainly just venting because I was very upset after the exchange and have been dealing with some health issues which my parents know about. So it's just a range of emotions right now. I keep getting a lot of the same questions. They have lived there for four years now. My mom has always been entitled and in alcoholic weekends and summers were spent with family. My aunt admitted when I was an adult, it was to keep us from being around the alcohol. I mainly did this for my father, so he can get a chance to retire after having heart surgery, when he worked a physically demanding job for 36 years. They asked to rent the house and pay it off as a prepayment of the mortgage, so the only big bill monthly was their health insurance. I had a few others interested in renting my house. I did not ask them for this. They did not co-sign on the mortgage or help with the down payment. Their name is not on my house deed. There have been rent increases in the past due to the taxes and insurance going up. And there was never an issue before. My husband's dad unfortunately passed away without getting to enjoy his retirement a big reason why my husband told my dad he needs to retire and enjoy life a little. And his inheritance helped pay the down payment on our new house. My mom has a history of putting SHT on me. And $3 is, I guess, my line in the sand. I started paying $200 per week after I graduated high school. Until I moved out at 20, I worked about 65 hours per week on top of school to do this. And yes, shockingly, they foreclosed when I moved out. I stupidly put her on my phone plan and basically paid her phone for two years until the contract ended, because she only paid me for three months out of those two years, she promised money for my wedding, and never delivered. They didn't pay for college. They stopped paying for close school expenses when I was 16 because I had a job. I know this is all a red flag parade but I trusted my dad more than her, I guess, and thought I was doing a good thing. I also want to keep this house because I love it and want to move back one day. It's just too small for us as a young family or allow my child to live there when they go to college and want to have fun without parents hanging around or racking up dorm costs. Also, she threatens divorce all the time. I doubt she'll actually go through with it. Relevant comments. OP on, if her mother is divorcing her father for over $3. OP. Who knows, she called and told me she was divorcing him, wanted all her money back, and to never speak to her again. Of course, she has threatened divorce before. I don't know where she would live because she can't afford anywhere, and it's not with me. Commenter 1. Kick them out then. Send them the eviction notice, and let her try her SHT in court. OP. I told my father I would, 
and my mom is dead set on a judge, giving her the house and top of me being money hungry. And they'll all see it. My husband said to print out rental listings in the area and slam it on the table and tell them to decide. $353 or $2,000. Choice is yours. I also tried to explain the clauses I can use to get her out. She thinks I can never make her leave. I don't know what cool aid she drank. OP on her mother's background. And if she is going no or low contact with her, for her family's safety. OP. My mom won't be welcome with her attitude. I hope her sister is willing to take her in. But she gets even nastier when she drinks. And no one can tolerate it anymore. Late 50s. And no, she's always been very entitled hence the previous foreclosure. Because she wants what she deserves, and not what she can afford. Made for a lot moving around and lack of utilities as a kid. Commenter 2. I'm confused. They paid off your mortgage to the tune of 50k. How does that figure into things? If it was a prepayment of rent. How was that calculated? OP. So to sum it up. They were to pay $1350 per month. But they paid for 50 months at 1k and cut an additional $350. So if they moved before 50 months they've been there 4 years. I would give them back $1,000 for every month they didn't get to live there. After 50 months, they still only paid $350, and not $1,350, but would get nothing back if they moved out because the full $50,000 was utilized. That's how it's outlined. So basically, there's very little of that $50,000 left they haven't used. Not sure if that explains it right. OP on who is really on the deed, and if she added her parents' names to it. OP no. They are just tenants. I own the house. The deed was recorded in my name years before they lived in it. Were I live, the deed is put into your name on the day of closing. I would never sign it over because I honestly love the house and plan to move in when I'm an empty nester. It's just too small for us right now with a growing family. Update. I finally have an update for you guys. So all aboard the Disappointment Express. To back up, after the divorce comment, they are not, in fact, getting a divorce. They went and celebrated their anniversary at a casino. I did not speak to them for a week. This past weekend I tried to speak to my father and get an apology, hoping he would be in a better frame of mind. He wasn't. He doubled down with the BS, saying they didn't realize all the stuff I put in the lease, that my house was uninhabitable when they moved and it wasn't, that they never would have put work into the house, if they were just renters, etc. I asked them to specify, and they said stuff about the garage screen door. The shed roof my husband replaced two-thirds of it with my dad's help. Dad did the other one-third, and by God, the hose. The hose leaked. That in no way affects the livability of the house, but in the words of my lawyer. And, you agreed to live there in its original condition, buddy, so that's on you. Just like not reading the lease. My dad went on to just say all these things they were doing for me without acknowledging a damn thing I was doing for them. At that point, I said some not nice things including the alcohol-induced dementia everyone mentioned. They wanted to know if they were still going to be able to take my son to the fair. Not a fat chance in hell. I told him I didn't want either one of them around me or my family until they stop being delusional and decide to pay the increase or GTFO. I then cried when I got off the phone, and my husband was upset with all of this. Cut to today. My mother called me, asking what needed to be done to resolve this because not being able to see my son was upsetting to them. I told them they needed to apologize for what they called me and that they were out of line. Well, you guys, they were scammed. My parents were effing scammed. That's what this was all about. In my area, homeowners get daily calls, texts, and letters from people wanting to buy their house. It's not new in this market. I have even told them these letters are trash. Well, my parents were getting calls from people saying they were going to be renting the house. They acted like they were representing me. Someone also showed up to their house, and was being very pushy about trying to see my mom in the house. This all happened before I mentioned the rent increase. So when my mom heard rent increase, she thought these phone calls and this person were real. Like, I was going to raise the rent to something they couldn't afford and force them out this was before I told them it was $3. But even after they thought I was throwing them out. I asked them why they didn't ask me, and they said they were scared and had no place to go. I explained to them, that's not even how it works. I can't rent a place with tenants. There's a whole legal process, and they should know this. They apologized for how they acted and everything they said and were embarrassed. They were even more embarrassed that they believed this person, and are officially old people that fell for a scammer, because they thought they were smarter than that. They hadn't given them money or information yet. I told them they were probably setting them up for it scammers will pretend to be renting a house, and take people's first slash last slash security. And when the new tenants show up, 
The house is already occupied, and they're screwed out of the money or pretend they need money to let them keep living in the house. I have no idea why they believe Ifel for this person, or why they never asked me in the first place, since I don't and wouldn't hire a representative for my one house. Their cameras were off when they came, but they're going to file a police report anyway. I told them to call the cops next time to file for harassment trespassing, if these people call or show up again. I got my apology from both parents. I explained everything in the lease and why it was legally written that way. I explained to them, I can't throw them out on the street on a whim, and as long as they pay the minimum bills to live their taxes insurance. I was going to keep my end of the deal, so I guess that's my update. They're not getting evicted for now, but I might have to start monitoring them more closely to see if they fall for other dumb SHT. PSA. A lot of us seem to have boomer parents, so I wanted to make you all aware of something. My parents have Medicaid edit, which in the great all US of A means that if they have a large medical expense, they aren't paying for SHT until all their personal assets are utilized. This means draining bank accounts, taking property, and even requesting back gifts from up to five years ago. So for example, if your mom falls and breaks a hip and winds up in a rehab, and your mom gave you $20,000 for a new roof a few years ago, the government will demand that money before they pay for the rehab. They can take their savings and demand property in their name be sold to pay for it. They legally cannot touch their car, but that's it. I know this from personal experience with a grandparent, and all of you should too to help protect your parents. Relevant comments. Commenter. Uh-huh. And do they have proof of this scam? Frankly, it sounds like rather than admit they acted like childish brats and apologize, they came up with this incredibly far-fetched story to make you forgive them more easily. Which, by all means, if you want to go along with it, that's totally your call. They are your parents, and maybe it's easier to just let them have this one. OP needs to get a will done for the house to pass it down to her future children. OP, I have a husband, and will have a will, so that wouldn't be an issue. OP on, if her parents believe everything, including the scams. OP, it doesn't make any sense. I think my mom believed this person, went hysterical, went off on me when she heard increase, riled my father up, and then I think they realized it was a scam but we're trying to get out of apologizing and admitting they're idiots. When I cut them off is when they admitted everything and were crying. I don't know why they couldn't ask me first. I've told them multiple times these letters and calls are trash. Honestly, my mother is also partially deaf and refuses to admit it. She hears SHT she wants and fills in the rest of the conversation. It's the most infuriating thing to deal with. Second story. My daughter uninvited her mom to the wedding, so I refused to walk her down the aisle and she just replaced us. I'm heartbroken. Secret voices. I apologize for including so many comments. I thought they painted a clearer picture of the story. Let me know what you think. So, this has been an ongoing issue in my family for a while. But now that the wedding is coming up, everything has come to a head. I 50M have a daughter, Emma 26F, who I've always had a very close relationship with. I've been married to my wife Emma's mom, Laura 49F, for 30 years now. We're a solid family, or at least I thought we were. Here's the backstory. A couple of years ago, Emma met her now fiancé, Tom 28M. Things moved fast between them, and she was head over heels for him. We were happy for her at first, but something changed about a year into their relationship. Emma became distant from us, especially her mom. Laura and Emma used to be really close, but all of a sudden, Emma started snapping at her for little things, avoiding family dinners, and not sharing anything about her life. Then we found out why. About a year and a half ago, I overheard Emma and Tom having a conversation when they didn't know I was around. She was saying horrible things about her mom's stuff that really broke my heart. Emma was telling Tom that she couldn't stand how overbearing her mom was, that Laura always tried to control her, and that she felt like Laura was jealous of her life and success. She even said she resents her mom for putting so much pressure on her when she was younger. I was floored. Laura has always supported Emma in everything she did, from helping her through college to emotionally supporting her during rough patches. I never saw any of this coming. But instead of addressing it right then, I wanted to wait and talk to Emma calmly later. When I finally brought it up with her, she completely shut down and got defensive. She claimed I was taking her mom's side and that I didn't understand what it was like to grow up with someone who was always in your business. She said some really hurtful things and ended up storming out. After that, she basically cut off her mom entirely, except for the absolute bare minimum communication for holidays or family events. Laura's heartbroken. I'm angry. It's been a mess. Fast forward to now. 
Emma's getting married. She called me last week to ask if I would walk her down the aisle. But here's the thing. I don't feel right doing it when she's treating her mother like this. Laura's not even invited to the wedding Emma said it would make things too uncomfortable if her mom were there. I told Emma that I can't walk her down the aisle if she's excluding her mom, who's done nothing but love and support her all her life. I said that until she makes things right with her mom, I won't be part of the wedding. Emma was furious. She accused me of choosing mom over her, said I was ruining her big day, and claimed I was punishing her for being honest about her feelings. She's now threatening to go out of contact with both of us, and I'm torn up inside. I love my daughter, but I can't stand by and watch her treat her mother like this. Ada for refusing to walk her down the aisle. Comments. Free underscore, I underscore 5 in 327. Did you ever find out what your daughter meant when she said her mom always tried to control her? I think that's the key to you understanding her reaction. Sweeks Blossom. Totally agree. It is important to dig deeper into what Emma meant by her mom trying to control her. Understanding her feelings could really shed light on the rift between them. Have an open conversation with Emma about it. Ask her to share specific examples. That way, you can get a clearer picture and hopefully start to mend things. Cacavalu. My wild theory. The mom told her to slow down the initial rapid pace of her relationship with now fiancé, that she's young, blah, 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 that she shouldn't rush to move in, etc. That if it's right, it will still be right in a couple of years, etc. Heavy underscore law 928880. And Tom immediately began his campaign to isolate her from her mom, who saw right through him. Cupcake Collective. Or maybe Tom was the first person who she could confide in about her mom. And he encouraged her to take a stand. Comparison flashy 8522. I think you need to find out what happened between your daughter and her mom a year and a half ago. This didn't come out of nowhere. Bert the nerd. She met Tom's mom and is comparing them now. Spinner off yarn. That could be a very likely possibility. Lord knows I knew my mother was awful, but it didn't hit me how awful until I got to know my mill. My God, I miss that woman. I have a severe skin disease and have to coat myself head to toe in moisturizer daily. It can be very expensive. My mom always acted like dealing with it was such a hassle and I was an inconvenience. We lived on the West Coast. She lived in the Midwest. This was before she met me and we had only talked on the phone. She went out and bought a box full of my moisturizer and put Winnie the Pooh stickers on every jar as she knew I loved Winnie the Pooh. I opened that box, addressed it to me, and that didn't have a single thing for her son. I saw all those jars and those stickers and just cried. It was one of the sweetest and most considerate things anyone had ever done for me. When I finally did meet her, she was picking us up from the airport, and she cried and just hugged and held on to me, saying how happy she was to finally get to see me and hug me. I felt more loved than I'd ever felt from my own mother. When she was dying and in hospice, a bunch of her friends showed up to visit. One of them sat next to me and asked me all about my hobbies and what I was working on and asked about my dogs by name. And I realized my mill really talked about me to her friends and that she thought very well of me. On that same visit, my husband was being a real pill to me one day, and she absolutely gave him hell for it. Just writing this is making me teary-eyed. I miss that woman so much. While it was awful having her die, I'm glad she never knew that her son and I divorced. It would have broken her heart. She and my sill often told me that if he and I didn't work out, they would choose me over him. I don't think that was true, as Syl definitely didn't pick me, even though her brother was a real SHT. I have no doubt that Mill would still be in contact if she were alive. My mother doesn't even compare to her. Judgment. Mixed. Update. One day later. I didn't expect my post to get this much attention, and honestly, I'm still trying to process everything. Things have changed a bit since I first posted, and unfortunately, it's not for the better. I tried reaching out to Emma again, hoping we could work things out. But what I found out has only made the situation worse. Here's what's happened. I sat down with Emma to try and calmly explain how much this situation has been hurting her mom and me. But she wasn't open to it. Instead, she told me she's asked Tom's mom to take on some of the important roles at the wedding that would normally be Laura's like helping her get ready on the morning of the wedding and giving a speech at the reception. When I asked Emma why she didn't want her mother there at all, she laid out a few specific reasons that, frankly, felt more like excuses. First, she said Laura has a tendency to make everything about herself, and she was worried Laura would cause a scene or try to take the spotlight. Emma brought up how, at her engagement party, Laura made several comments to the guests about how hard it is to let go of your little girl, 
and kept trying to give a toast even though Emma and Tom had planned for only the best man and maid of honor to speak. Emma said she felt embarrassed and that it was one of the reasons she felt Laura would try to control things on the wedding day. Emma also claimed Laura has a habit of undermining her decisions. For example, when Emma first started dating Tom, Laura expressed concerns that things were moving too fast, and Emma felt Laura was trying to influence her choice of partners. This is a sensitive topic for Emma because she feels Laura has never fully approved of Tom, and that tension would ruin the day. Hearing all this was hard. Laura may not be perfect. But the idea that she would intentionally make Emma's wedding about herself or try to sabotage the day is just unfair. She's only ever wanted to be there for her daughter. And I know Laura's been nothing but supportive, even when she's had concerns about Tom. When Emma told me that Tom's mom, Sandra, would be filling these roles instead, my heart broke. Laura has dreamed of helping Emma on her wedding day since she was a little girl. Being uninvited was already devastating. But hearing that Tom's mom is taking her place in these intimate moments feels like a complete betrayal. It's not just that Laura's being excluded, it's that someone else is being given the role she should have had. I tried telling Emma that this would only hurt her relationship with her mom further. But she doubled down, saying she needed people around her who supported her decisions and didn't make her feel guilty. She's convinced that Tom's mom understands her better and is more in tune with who she is now. It was a gut punch to hear that especially knowing how much Laura has always supported her. As for walking her down the aisle now, I haven't changed my mind. I can't be part of this wedding when Laura is being disrespected like this. It feels wrong to stand by Emma's side while she's doing this to her mother, who has only ever tried to be there for her. I'm not sure where our family goes from here. Emma is now saying she might cut contact with us if we don't respect her boundaries, and honestly, I'm heartbroken. I don't want to lose my daughter, but I also can't stand by and let her continue to treat her mom this way. Thanks again for all the support. I'm still trying to make sense of everything, and I guess only time will tell how this plays out. Comments. PLS Stay Hydrated. Info. Did you and Emma talk about any instances of Laura undermining or causing a scene that didn't involve Tom at the time? Bitter Picture 5 and 394. Right. It doesn't seem like OP actually cared to get to the bottom of that. According to OP, his daughter says these are ongoing issues but only brings up recent examples that involve Tom. Why didn't he dig deeper and find out why his daughter felt that way? It could be because Tom is the problem, and probing further could have made her admit that all her issues with her mom stem from him. Or it could be that the daughter was so browbeaten by her overbearing mother that she never had the strength to stand up to her until she had the support of a good partner and his family. Both situations are common. Sadly, abusive partners find ways to drive wedges between their victims and their support systems. But adult children who grew up under the thumb of toxic-slash-manipulative-slash-narcissistic parents can suddenly find the strength to put down boundaries and go and see if necessary, with the support and love of a good partner. Especially if they gain a familial connection to their partner's family. We really need more information about where the daughter's feelings about her mother started and under what conditions. Anxious Artist 300 Someone hit me up when they see a post titled, Ada for choosing not to invite my mother to my wedding. Josephinian Someone tag me when Emma posts in r slash raised by narcissists. Jumps and puddles one. So either OP's wife is overbearing, and he's downplaying that, or the future husband is slowly alienating the family. I might pass on the wedding bit. Let daughter know that you are always there for her, without judgment, if she needs you. Miss Smoxie 2004. There's way too much missing information to tell which one it is. I came out of an abusive relationship 15 years ago. So when I hear that a relationship moved fast, followed by any debacle about family relationships, a little red flag goes up. Fire underscore or underscore water underscore Kai. There is a serious disconnect between your daughter's version of things and you and your wife's. I can't say who's to blame, but something absolutely went wrong in your household. Whether your daughter took her mother's concern to the extreme, or you think your wife's qualities are endearing, while no one else does, who the heck knows? But you're in a losing position either way. Have you ever suggested family counseling? Neurodetuser 9572. Abusive parents tend to never remember the trauma they caused their kids. It's a very common thing with narcissists' abusive parents. Thank you for watching the video. If you are interested in listening to these kinds of stories, we've got more in store for you. Simply subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and share it with your friends.